Hi, in this video we're going to be going over how you're going to be running a search to find a service rather than a product. I'm also going to teach you how you're going to use filters, how you're going to be adding rules, and how you're going to be expanding the query using synonyms. So again, this is going to kind of go over some of the complex searches. The first thing we're going to do is begin with our primary filter. In this case, we're going to default to any description field. We do that because this filter is the one that is mostly used because it contains the information where the product or the service is better described. However, once you click that arrow, you're going to be able to see this drop list. And this list is really quite large. There are hundreds of filters that you can use. To make it a little simpler, we include the most common filters here at the top. But you can use whichever one you're comfortable using or whatever one it is that you want to find. I'm going to leave it as any description field. And my next step is now to select my operator. Now these operators were discussed in previous videos, so I'm just kind of going to go over it here really quickly. Each of these, between the all, any, and none, they all perform a different function. All works like the word and, which means that for everything that one enters into that search bar, the system is going to find them all in every line item. So it's going to give you fewer results. Inversely, any expands the results because it works like or, which means that if I have three things written in a search bar, it's going to look for thing number one or thing two or thing three. So it's going to give you a wider result. And none excludes information. It gives you the, the strength to be able to remove those things that are superfluous from your query. Because I'm going to expand my search, I'm going to keep it as any. And what I'm looking for here, I'm going to be looking for service agreements, right? So I'm going to look for those contracts where the service maintenance agreement is included. So I'm going to start in and I'm going to type information. You see that I'm going to have the drop box at the bottom, which is giving me some tips. I can either continue to build my query right from the search bar is where I am, or I can click down here and add things into the bar. I'm going to keep it when I type my own. So I'm going to start in with service agreement. And now I'm going to expand it because service agreement can also be known as a maintenance agreement, right? So again, you start to see again how you see it down here. So I'm going to just continue to type mine. So it's maintenance agreement. Now we're also going to give you our synonyms that I'm going to show you how you're going to use that to find worries in which this service can also be known. It gives you a really great way of kind of looking at the system a little wider. So service agreement can also be known as service contract. So I'm going to type that in there. As well as, again, a maintenance contract. All right, so this is giving us a lot of options here. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it in. And each time that I enter the search, you're going to see that this information down here is going to continue to fluctuate. Because what it's doing is that it's finding every line item where these words appear exactly as written. In this case, because I have them written side by side, what I'm looking for is called the phrase search, which means that the queries are going to be written exactly the way that I have them written, where the word service prefaces the word agreement, or the word maintenance prefaces agreement, etc., etc. But I can expand this. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here to my little wrench. And now, again, we discussed the proximity search in earlier videos. I'm going to discuss it really briefly here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow certain words to exist between my phrases, right? So I'm going to begin with service agreement. It's possible that an agency wrote service level agreement, or maybe they wrote service copier agreement. And so because they've added a word in between it, if I didn't search it that way, which I did not, the system is not going to pull it since it's only going to look for exactly the way that I have it written up here. So I'm going to allow so many words to exist between my query words. You can select however many words you want. Just here's a little tip. Keep in mind that the more words that you allow to exist between your query words, the more likely you are to pick up information that's irrelevant, those things that are not going to support your search. So we recommend that you start with a really low number, ones, twos, threes, etc. Take a look. If it's working for you, then great. If it isn't, if you're picking up things that are irrelevant, then just reduce the number. Because I have the phrase search all throughout, I'm going to make the same changes to the others. And I'm going to stick with two. I, you know, I'm a little consistent here. I seem to think that it works really well for me. So I'm going to leave it as two. Okay, so now my next step is say, 
Could have, is this good? If it is, great. I'm going to go ahead and click this, close the screen, and now I'm going to add a rule. Because what I really want to know now is, here's everybody who's buying a service agreement, but what I'm really interested in is how much did they pay by hour? So I'm going to open up my next filter, right? I'm going to stick with any description field. I'm going to leave it as any, because now I'm going to say, I want to find service agreements, right? This is here. And I want to find where the per service by hour is written in any way. So now I'm going to put in here, right? And again, I'm going to do a phrase search. So I'm going to write two things in my one entry, and then I'm going to lock it in by hitting my return key. So per hour, perfect. And you're going to start to see that already our results are going to show exactly that. Here's a service contract and how much they paid by hour. But I also know that it's possible that the agency didn't just write per hour this way. Maybe they could have abbreviated it, right? So they could have done PR hour. So I'm just going to play around with how else it could be known. And again, we give you a great opportunity here to kind of play around with it, find what really works for you. And it can also be put in as hourly. So I'm going to do that. I'm also interested in the annual rates, right? Because if I have a service agreement, it could also be paid by an in an annual basis. So annual agreement, right? I want to put that in there. And it could be paid by quarter or by month. So I'm going to put that in there as well. <clears throat> All right, we, so we have enough to go on here. So you, can, you get the general idea. I'm going to continue to add any way in which this product or service could be known. And so now you're going to start to see that I have a lot more data, right? And so let's say now you're looking for the maintenance agreement for the copier repair, right? But now you see here that it's looking for the same thing. I can now add an additional rule. So each time that I add a rule, it's going to default to and, and that's really the best way to kind of build it because the more rules you add, the more exclusive your search is going to be. So therefore, the better data you're going to get. So now what I want to do is say, I want to now focus my service agreement for really equipment, let's say like office or household equipment. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stick with any description field. Okay, I'm going to leave it as any because now I'm going to again expand my search. And here I'm going to type in all the equipment that I want, right? So printers, or a copier. I'm not sure if anybody still has a fax, but let's throw that in there. Fax or a scanner. So you get to add the idea, right? So I'm going to put in office equipment. Again, you get to see that down here, here's my list. It's going to give me all of my suggestions, but I'm going to stick with equipment. All right, so I can continue to expand that any way that I want. Maybe I'm also going to put in here computers, right, or a laptop. Now, because I also said that I look for household equipment, that I could do the same thing. So I can type in household. Or maybe like a kitchen. So you get the general idea, right? I can, I can continue to add as many terms as I want within my query bar. Because I'm using any, the system is looking for printer, or copier, or fax, et cetera, et cetera. So it's going to give me much more information. It's going to give me a wider level of data. And that's really what I want to find. Keep in mind that I can continue. If I find another way in which per hour could be known, let's say, maybe they put in here annual or yearly. So if I don't have it that way, then I can go ahead and type it in here. And I want to say, you know, what I really want is yearly. You can always come back in and tweak your results, continue to add data within it. I can also now expand my search and say, I'm going to look for synonyms. So I'm going to come down here. Let's expand again using the wrench. And now when you select your synonyms, the system is going to look for things that are similar, right? So I'm going to click on synonyms. And here's going to tell me whatever it is that I want, right? So it can be some things that maybe I want to include. And sometimes I don't, right? I think, you know, the printer is enough of a description. I don't need to put in another one. So I can come over here and select copier and do the same thing, right? I can continue to do that throughout any one of these. And the next thing is that if I just want to say, you know what, maybe it's facsimile. So I think, well, I should put that in there. So I'm going to click on it and you see that the system just immediately added it to it. So we just give you a really quick way of being able to get to your next level of searches. Okay, now I'm going to add an additional rule. I want to exclude. We've talked about how to use any We've talked about how you're going to use all. Let me show you how you're going to get rid of stuff. Let's use none. I'm going to come back and use my major filter, right? I'm going to select any description field. And what I want to remove here is the word software, right? Because I only do the service agreement for equipment. So rather than using anything else here, I'm going to select none. Let's be 
really quite simple. I'm going to type in software. And so now the system is going to go through a quick scour and it's going to remove any line item where any of these three things appear, right? So service agreement in any form and any way in which the service was paid by hour, quarterly, etc. for all of the equipment that I put in here, right? So and any of these, and now it's going to exclude software. Now I also want to exclude maybe a type of agency. Let's say I want to remove, let's say federal government. So I'm going to select yet another rule. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to move away from any description field. I'm going to select agency type. And now the system is going to either give me a list, right? So I can either select from this list whatever I want to exclude, in this case, a federal government. I select that. I come here and I hit exclude. And that's it. It's removed. Super simple. And anything that's in red has now been excluded from the query. So you have that option. Or let me go ahead and remove this. You also have the option of selecting contains. And then now just type in what I don't need, right? So I'm going to remove federal. And you see that it's kind of giving me the information there, so I'm going to do the same thing. So you can type it in, you can select from the list, either way it's going to go ahead and exclude it. And so now my agency type, actually excuse me, rather than putting any, it should be none. So you see, there you go. And now it's removed. So I encourage you to use this particular search so that you can go ahead and look for a service. Go ahead and use the operators and as well as any, all, and none add rules, remove things, play around with it, become really comfortable with it. We're always going to be here to help you, so feel free to get in contact with us at 888-998-6348, or you can email us directly at support at smartprocure.us.